since I was five years old in a joke voice. She's really fun sometimes, sometimes she's serious, and she likes to get things going. I've known Helen pretty much of my teenage life. I always admired her because I would watch her and she was pretty tough. When we were teenagers, she didn't take nothing. I mean, if it took throwing shoes at you, you couldn't walk out, it was fines, five dollar fines, coming in late to a performance, and you love to see and you're gonna pay your fines. And she made you respect wherever you were, we had to respect her. And the places that we went, she wanted us to sing 100%. If it was a church that only seated 50, we had to sing the same as if it was 2,000. I joined the choir about 12 years ago after I saw Helen Stevens literally swoon and faint at the piano bench. And I just knew I had to get some of that into my life. Gospel music makes you feel so good. And Helen, if anything, has gotten stronger and more focused over the years. And certainly more loving with all of the ordeals that she's been through. It's just amazing the power and the energy that God gives Helen Stevens through that gospel music. I played for my first church when I was 12 years old. I can't remember the exact age I was when I began taking piano lessons from Professor Taylor. And he was real strict. I guess that's where I get the ruler. I have six rulers. If you don't know your piano lesson, you get a lick. Oof. Helen can kill you and love you all at the same time. Um, Helen is a great woman. I have a lot of rules, I guess, and regulations that I expect each choir to follow. Just as simple as that. And I guess I've been that way for umpteen years. And there's no way that that's going to leave. <laughs> I may get tired a little bit, but I'm still ready to go. Every night I'm ready to go for a rehearsal. I even have piano students in the late afternoons that keep me busy. I enjoy that. I haven't got tired yet. It lifted my spirits to work with all of these choirs. I have seven choirs that I work with. The Voices of Christ, which is 32 years old. The Lighthouse Singers. The Helen J. H. Stevens Angelic Voices, the Helen J. H. Stevens Young Adult Voices, the James Cleveland's Chorus, and my church choir here. I'm a graduate of Dillard University of New Orleans, classical pianist, also a gospel pianist. It was more or less a gift for me because I did study piano, but the gospel music came with a gift that I could play anything, anything you sing. I've been a lighthouse singer for more than 10 years. Helen has been an inspiration to me and my life for especially the person that she is. She is um, totally centered in her vision and her quest in this world and she inspires my life daily. Well, I came from a background of singing rock and roll music, and when I first came to the choir, it was just to have a place to sing, and uh, it actually brought me back into the church um, through the music. I, I didn't expect it when I came the first time to sing with Lighthouse, but uh, that's what it did for me. I'm going on 18 years with Lighthouse Singers now. Well, she agreed to come to someone's living room and teach a few of us that were interested in gospel music but quite frankly I don't think at the time knew really what it was all about but we've hung in with her for 
you know, some of us now, 22 years, and I consider Helen to be my mentor. I started taking piano lessons with her. Now I serve as the associate director, and she's inspired so many of us um, to do this wonderful art form. <laughs> To encourage someone uh, really to be in the choir, everybody can sing. Everybody has a voice, everybody can sing. Everybody may not sing alike, but you can really be trained to sing whatever is needed, whatever your part is, soprano, alto, tenor, or bass. Oh, there are so many musicians that I could name that has taken piano lessons from me. Sylvester Anderson, who teaches at UC Berkeley, uh, it was a music major, and I taught Sylvester for 15 years. There's Clarence Eglinton, who's working with me now at the Alabama Institutional Baptist Church. And no longer than last night rehearsal, he brought me his piano book that he was taking lessons from when I was teaching him with the date on it, 1976. <laughs> I started with Lighthouse Singers, which is quite interesting, which is a light choir that sings black gospel music. If you put a curtain in front of them, you could not tell that they were not black. It was the most uh, amazing pleasure that we found that we were actually able to partake in this 20 years ago when this started. We had a, a class that several of us we're trying to teach ourselves this music. We weren't doing such a great job, and we're very happy that Helen came along, led by God, to come and see if the white folk could do this stuff. Wonderful. I've known her all my life. She's a, <laughs> she's a very mysterious lady, but she has an elegance, and she, that's why she has that name, Lady Stevens. She's just a perfect lady. She can make anything sing. Anytime she lifts her hands, we move right with her. She's so graceful. In this room you will see awards and pictures and plaques. And believe it or not, we've got rent -a space that has just as much in rent -a space as in this room. who is the chapter representative for Japan. And he invited us over, and we were glad to receive the invitation. In two months' time, we raised a lot of money to get those kids over there. When I heard about when I was going to Japan, I felt excited, because this is a new place that I've never been to. And I was like really packed like two weeks before it. I loved the people. They were so, so genuine with us. Going downtown, it was like celebrities that everyone took, wants to take pictures of us, touching our hair. And they could not speak our, our language and we couldn't speak theirs, but things got across. We had a very good time in Japan. We went to Fukuoka, that's the city, and uh, they treated us like we were famous because I guess they never seen us before, us black people. I really like the culture and how they were really nice to you. They would run to you in the restaurants. When we walked around the neighborhood or whatever, people would just come up and shishima, shishima or something, you know. And, uh, they just uh, say hello to us and be happy to see us and take pictures and stuff. Maybe we feel like a little superstar or something. The young people were like uh, celebrities uh, in Japan. They enjoyed it so much. They really had a, f a fruitful trip. Very fruitful. <laughs> I've been in black gospel music all my life, so I know nothing else but black gospel music. And it's amazing to see another culture singing black gospel music. I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 96, and I told my daddy and my older brother that they need to have themselves checked. 
you know. Uh, but the way I came through it, I mean, you know, and I'm through it, you know, and I'm a survivor. If, I, if it gave me five years, if it gave me another year, I'm cool. You know, and, and my best chance of survival was to have the surgery. And they gave me a 70% chance. And I was telling my dad, I told my dad the same thing. I gave my dad the same advice, and look at him. And he rolling like part. And she is too. They ain't stop. They ain't, they ain't missed a beat. They haven't missed a beat. Helen and I've been married 50 years. It will be 51 years, June 21st of 2001. We found out that it was a joy just to be together and to be suffering with a cancer that uh, we pulled through like champs. But she had, she had gone through three surgeries yeah. and seven of her eight chemotherapy treatment when I was diagnosed. I think he was more of a support to me than I was to him because I was coming out of my chemo when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and he wouldn't tell me until I had my last That's chemo. Right. Right. We both were sick to, for a period of time together and overlapped and uh, but we were just immensely blessed with the help and support and prayer that went up for us during our illness. We had people praying for us all over the world and the Lord was saying here comes another prayer up for them Stevens again. I need to bless them. And he did. Yeah. We met in high school at Booker T. Washington High School. And I was known as a charm girl in school. This was a group of young ladies that were, I guess, supposed to have been of high caliber. And he thought that I was nice. We were married in 1950. My reason for coming to Oakland, California is because the Reverend C.A. Washington, who's the pastor of the Solid Rock Baptist, who was the pastor of the Solid Rock Baptist Church here in Oakland, invited me here, but I did not like Oakland, so I went back home to New Orleans. But Arnold didn't go. Arnold stayed here. And I was expecting my second child, so I needed my husband so I moved back to Oakland. And I think I was here about two weeks before Chevy was born. I believe you were the first person to uh, teach at an institution of higher learning. And, uh, you were recruited to teach at Cal State Haywood in 1975 by Dr. Saltzer. And uh, you did teach a gospel class, a credited class there, for a period of seven years. that we've been married 51 years. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. still, that's a long time to put up with one person. Yes. My dear mother. Yeah. <laughs> so. Good morning, 